This video made possible by the ICC Stellar Surveyors and subscribers like you. Welcome back to Around the Verse, I'm Ben Lesnick. This week on the ATV interview, Jared sits down with David Swafford to talk about his history with Chris Roberts, and we hear from lighting artist Emre Switzer about the Nick's Landing Zone. But first, I'm home alone again. Ah! Seriously though, where is everyone? Jared? Jared? That's about all that's going on right now. Now let's check in with David Swafford, our Director of Public Relations here at Cloud Imperium Games. Thanks guys. Now for this week's ATV interview, we're sitting down with our PR Director, Mr. David Swafford. David, how you doing? Happy to be here. I'm yeah. doing great. Now, you've been with Star Citizen since the beginning, really, right? Pretty much, All right. yeah. Tell us what a PR director does for Star Citizen. Well, my job is to stay in touch with all the media outlets, uh, and most most of the ones that we that that, that you know, like the, the PC gamers and the Kotaku's and the Polygons, and make sure I don't leave anybody out. Gamespot, all those, all those, IGN. Uh, I have pretty much regular communication with those people on a on a, on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm I'm always looking for stories, uh, ideas that we can pitch to those outlets and. You know, they're calling me a lot of times, wanting to you know get an interview with Chris or with you or some someone else in the company. So it's just uh, managing that, facilitating that, and making sure that that they're getting you know what they need from us in order to do their job. Not just interviews and stuff, but game assets. Yeah. Uh, yep. You were you, I, I had to walk past your office earlier today. You were you were trying to uh, wrangle up a, a cover for what was it, GameStar? Yes, we've got a GameStar cover out uh, this month. Uh, GameStar is in Germany, so it's not just the U.S. either. It's uh, handling. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our international media also, UK, Germany, France, um, um, you know, just all over the world. Gotcha. So basically just wrangling up all our press. Yes. In, in its shortest basic sense, I guess. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's changed a lot too, uh, you know, from when I first started, it was all about magazines, mm -hmm. physical magazines. And we still have a few of those, there, sorry, but they are few and far between. Uh, Magazine. What's, what, what's a magazine? What is a magazine exactly? Okay. You know those those gaming magazines that, uh, of course, you know that that were on the shelves, and there used to be entire shelves devoted to mm -hmm. gaming magazines, and now there's maybe one, two, or three on the shelf. But uh, now it's all you know, like everything else, it's all online. It's in, anything with the media now. Everything's mm -hmm. online, and it's all about video, and it's all about pictures. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's it's changed. You got to change with the times, and uh, absolutely, you know, that's that's the way it's it's gone. Well, and then. And this is a this is a project of a lot of change. Yeah. We're doing a lot of things different, so I imagine it's a it's an interesting feat for the the, the press to keep up with the th all the things that we're doing differently. Yeah, when we do more communication externally uh, than any other company I've ever worked for in any other product, and so you know, a lot of what you guys do on the community side helps me a lot because mm -hmm. the press is so interested in what we're doing that they're generally watching everything we post mm -hmm. on a daily basis and uh, so you, you, you kind of take a little bit of the work away from me but uh, we, post but a we, have, lot. We, we have we have a good product too and that always helps sell it that helps a lot um, now this isn't your first project with Chris you've worked with Chris before uh, wh where did you and Chris start we started well Chris was at origin I came to origin as their PR person PR uh, you know, manager and then director uh, in 94 so okay. I worked on wing 3 uh, that was one of my very first projects. We went out to Hollywood. We did the, the green screen shoot mm -hmm. with Mark Hamill and Malcolm McDowell and, and Ginger and uh, Tom Wilson. And uh, so worked on Wing 3 and then we brought in the, 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 the live sets with the film uh, about a year after that for Wing 4. And then Chris went off and you know did his, his own thing in Digital Anvil and then went off to Hollywood and then called me. Uh, three three years or so ago, th three and a half years mm -hmm. ago, it was the summer of 2012, yeah. and said, I've got this idea about raising money and, and st this starting this new project, and uh, you know, you've, you've, and I'd stayed in the gaming business uh, during that whole time that he was out, or with another company where I wasn't, 
Um, and he said, would you like to help out? And I sort of thought about it for five seconds <laughs> <laughs> and said, sure, sign, sign me up. Hey, Chris, uh, you know, obviously I haven't known Chris for very long, but it, it's, it's always reassuring to me when I see the number of people that he's worked with that have come back to work with him again. It's, uh, yeah. it's definitely been my experience. I, 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 working with Chris is a pleasure day in and day out. It's a, it's a, he's a very demanding taskmaster. He has very high standards. And, no and, and, and he asks a lot of his people. But that, that, that fact has not changed <laughs> uh, from origin days. He was the same way back then. Yeah, but it, it's, 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 it's never not paid off so far. So. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, every, every game he's worked on has, has done quite well. So you know, it's, it speaks for itself. You mentioned Wing Commander 3, and this, this, this occurred to me here. I wanted to ask you about this. What was, what was it like trying to promote a game with full motion video it, like it, it was an entirely new genre mm -hmm. at that point. The the the, the full mo the interactive movie like that. What mm -hmm. what was that like? Well, uh, a little bit of it had been done then, just a little yeah. bit. But we sort of took it to a whole different level. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think the other thing we did was we had this ensemble cast. I mean, mm -hmm. a few games that had this kind of famous person, this actor. We had like five, you know. And, and of course, bringing back Mark Hamill, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sort of into the to, to the a space combat game. Certainly, you know, helped a little bit. Um, so that 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 was that was uh, it was different because the other the other difference for me was I had been working on other Origin games where we just dealt with the gaming press. Uh, you know, you had Mark Hamill and Malcolm McDowell and Tom Wilson, and suddenly, uh, you know, people outside the gaming area are interested in your product. You know, what, mm -hmm. what is this? What is this company that's doing this game? You know, with, with these stars. So. Uh, on the PR side, it really it, it pushed me into getting more into you know, dealing more with entertainment press and and just sort sort of spread our net out a little bit wider than where it was. It's all right. Uh, now, in our pre-interview, I asked him if, if he had any embarrassing stories about Chris <laughs> Roberts, and to his credit, he sat here and racked his brain for about <laughs> fifteen minutes trying to think of an embarrassing Chris <laughs> Roberts story. Uh, were you able to come up with something that? Well, that, I, I don't want to get fired. But maybe I, I'll get in trouble a little bit. If, you know, just well, I, I'll I, you know put it like this. Uh, you know, when I came into the gaming industry, it was '94, and the gaming industry was still young, and, and people were you know th there was there was you know people were doing quite well in it, um, and so there were lots of interesting parties and fun parties and big parties, mm -hmm. uh, and you know we had successful products, and so you know the more success you had, the the bigger the more fun you have at those things. And Chris put on some interesting parties. <laughs> there, there were there were quite a few uh, interesting times back in those days. Any chance we can get some pictures? Uh, there were pictures. There are pictures. <laughs> <laughs> this is the point where the interview gets cuts to static this, because this, this the is interview where the, has been canceled. This, this, <laughs> this is where the PR guy rubs his hands and says, "Yes, <laughs> we have pictures." <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's as, that's, as, that's as far as we'll push that. We we, we want to keep our jobs. Um, David, is there anything else you, you, you want the fans to know? I mean, your, your job is, is, is getting our message out right. about Star Citizen. I mean, we, 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 I think we do pretty well between, between all the shows and all the comic posts and all Absolutely. the interviews and you the magazine do. articles. Community is, is, is amazing uh, at this company, and, and, and you and Ben and your group have done some wonderful things. I will say this. Next year is a big year. Uh, it is a big year, We're, and we've got lots of, lots of exciting things, and... It's going to make my job easier because you're, you know, the, the, we're making so many wonderful sort of parts to this game that are going to con continue to sort of flow out. Uh, and uh, we, we've turned the corner. Um, not that we really had a corner to turn necessarily, mm -hmm. but you know, we've, we've been working on a lot of things and it's, we sort of hit the top of the mountain and we're going downhill. And I think, uh, I think it's going to, well, that's a, that's a good hill to Star be going Citizen down. Star Citizen is going downhill. <laughs> David Swafford, As opposed PR to going director. uphill. We're at the top, uh, but it's 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 going to be a really fun, interesting year, and we've got lots of great things. So stand oh, yeah. by. I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I want to play Squadrons 42 so bad. I can't I can't even verbalize it. Uh, finally, uh, last question: uh, Can you get Mark Campbell to come to my house? Uh, you know, let me, let me dial speed dial. No, I'm just joking. Um, hey, who knows? He's 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 going to help us out on some on some promotions for sure. So, uh, and by the way. That's one, I don't know when this is going to be out, but uh, his face is going to be all over the newsstands here pretty soon. Yeah, uh, this will be In connection the, with our, uh, 
uh, in, a, in connection with our product, not just uh, the, the other big project <laughs> he's working on right now. <laughs> this will be after the anniversary live stream. So. Okay, got it. So, uh, David, thanks for taking the time to Enjoy chat with it. us. Enjoy it, as right. always, as right. always. Back to you guys. Thanks, David. If you guys can believe it, um, David was public relations director at Origin back in the day. And when I was a 16-year-old eager to find out everything about Wing Commander, he was always very, very patient with me. It's always uh, really cool that I'm working with him now on Star Citizen. Next up, Emery Switzer shows us the lighting of the Nix landing zone and how it came to be. Thanks guys. On this week's ATV Behind the Scenes, we sit down with associate lighting artist Emra Switzer. Emra, how you doing man? Doing good. Good. Now you've been doing the lighting for Area 18, for the, the lighting revamps for our hangars, mm -hmm. and uh, most. And coming up next, we're gonna see your lighting on the Nix landing zone. Yeah. So what we wanna do is we were hoping we could sit down and take a look at a little bit about what goes into creating the lighting for one of our landing zones. Yeah, for sure. All right man, you got the wheel, take us through it. All right, so this right here is the level without any lighting, really. Uh, there's a basic environment probe in here for global ambient terms. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice you know, blue, and that's mainly just from the sky. But if we go in, it, this doesn't really look that good. Yeah. Um, so if I go in here, and I'll just start turning on different layers, and that'll show what, the scene, what, what I'm actually doing. So okay. the first thing is the ambient. Um, so I go in, I place down an environment probe, which is this entity right here, and this basically captures the scene, it captures it in a 360 degree angle, and puts it in a texture, which looks just like this. And this gets reprojected back onto the scene as the ambient term, which is essentially the bounce lighting. Um, most games aren't able to compute uh, real, you can't ray trace everything, mm -hmm. so we use, uh, we split the defer, or we split our direct and our indirect lighting into our ambient and direct lighting. Um, and so this is the ambient. So this is all the bounce lighting that's going on. And so you can see it's pretty pretty dark compared to the exterior lighting. Yeah, but it's, it's a good start though. Yeah, it's definitely a good start, but it's nowhere close to where it should be. <laughs> so the next thing I do is I place down our direct, which is the other component. Uh, so I can go and enable that. And so already you can see it looks quite a bit better. And then after that we layer in fog and other atmospheric effects and it gives the full look. And let me just toggle those off and on again. How many lights are we looking at here right now? Um, probably in this area, only around 12 to 20, I would say. Really? Yeah. Um, obviously, in a full landing site, there's going to be a lot more, mm -hmm. anywhere from you know a couple hundred to even a thousand or so, uh, because these maps are, are gigantic. Um, so yeah, I can fly on through. Jeez. Lighting really does make the level. So I'll toggle all the layers on again, or off again. That's before, that's ambient, that's direct, and then that's your volumetrics. So, yeah. Um, one of the other things we have to keep in mind, though, is performance. And so that's a huge aspect of, of the game um, and making it run in everybody's PCs, right? Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and toggle off some of the other layers here. It's just so that we can get a better representation of performance. Um, and this right here is our lighting overlap. So basically every single light has a frustrum which it affects, which is an area that it, it computes on. And so if you have a light, um, you can kind of see these spherical shapes within the scene and there's also cones that you can see the sphere pretty well. So that's a light basically. So if I turn it off again, you have this light and it's affecting this area. Um, and so you don't want to have overlapping lights. And that's what this is demonstrating. So the darker the values are, so purple and blue values are really good, white values aren't so good. So there's probably a little bit of work to be done there. What uh, happens when you have overlapping lights? Oh, it, so it has to do more passes on the GPU to figure out what, what color it should shade it. So you don't want to do that. You want to have it be as simple and as efficient as possible. And so if you're having tons of overlap, you don't have that. So gotcha. that's something that we try to reduce as much as possible. I imagine when you start, you throw in a whole bunch of lights, you know, just playing around and then mm -hmm. start kind of reducing the way like a sculptor would reduce mm -hmm. from a, slit of, a slab of marble. Exactly, exactly. If you start with something that looks good, um, it's pretty easy to go in and, and actually make it perform better, but you can't really take something that's efficient and make it pretty, gotcha. you know, so. 
that's kind of the trade-off. Let me go ahead and uh, show the, the lighting only. Um, so if I go here and just put on a really basic flat material, you can see how the lighting affects the seam. So fly through it again. Hmm. So this is mainly just lighting. Um, it's got some specular reflection and some other stuff going on, but that's that. So yeah, um, and let me go ahead and unhide all the other layers so we can take a look around. <laughs> Warn me when that's going to come up, man. <laughs> Jeez. All right, guys, this is uh, the next landing zone. It looks kind of cool. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look super, super amazing. Just <laughs> super amazing. Jeez. Yeah. So, now, the skybox with the with the sun there, is the sun actually providing a, a source of light at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, the interior setup is pretty different from how we handled the exterior. So, the exterior, actually, if I go here to the time of day tool, um, there's around, I think, close to 100 variables that you can play with. Um, that controls everything from, let me just slide this over here, the horizon color, which you can notice change right over here, to the fog color, um, as well as other elements like the sun color. So you can hmm. really go in and, and tweak every single value. Um, and the sun is, is on a different system than, than light. It uses cascades, which means that you can get shadows that go out a lot farther than standard lights. Um, so, yeah. We can have shadows on distant objects like this and this. And, and I think even these asteroids cast shadows. Mm -hmm. So, it's pretty crazy. <coughs> yeah. As quickly as he gives it to us, he takes it away. <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nyx is kind of cool. Right, anything else you can show us? Um, I know you had the self land going on in the back. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, I got self land. So, this is the new hangar relight for the self land hangar. Um, so, we're working on trying to get this over to the release builds, as previously mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a long process. There's quite a few issues coming up all at once in regards to the hangers. But hopefully it'll be in soon. Um, but yeah, so this is what it should look like if you have a constellation. And hopefully by the time this airs, this is what it will look like in your hangar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, Emma. Well, thanks so much for taking us through. Uh, I don't think anybody will ever have any doubts about how important lighting is to uh, creating the scene. Uh, thanks so much, man. Yeah, thank you. Alright, back to you guys. Now it's time for this week's MVP. But there's no one here. So uh, stuff it, I'm gonna give it to Ezzy Adama, the guy who creates the incredible CIG photoshops on the forums. Just, uh, just look at these masterpieces. Uh, Adama, you keep us entertained here all the time and we, we appreciate your, your strange, wonderful hobby. That's it for Around the Verse today and for Star Citizen in 2015. We'd like to say uh, Happy New Year to everyone out there. It's, it's been an incredible year for the team here at Cloud Imperium and we are excited about 2016. Um, hope you're all relaxing with your families and ready to ring in what's going to be a very exciting year for hopefully Star Citizen and everyone. With that, we will say thank you, Happy New Year, and we will see you next time on Around the Verse. What I miss?